Welcome to the Great American Collectibles Show, heard Wednesdays at 6.30 p.m. Eastern on PSA.com and the PSA Facebook page. The Great American Collectibles Show is brought to you by PSA and the National Sports Collectors Convention. Tonight's headlines are brought to you by Sports Collectors Daily. For all of your hobby news, features, and more, visit sportscollectorsdaily.com. And now, your hosts, Tom Zappala and Rico Petroselli. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Mr. P, how are you? All right, good. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the show. Great American Collectible it's, Show. I am I Tom. To <laughs> it really is. <laughs> I'm Tom Zappala with Red Sox Hall of Famer and sports icon in the city of Boston, Rico Petroselli. How are you, buddy? Good. Didn't I? Listen, uh, thanks for coming over last week. You owe me uh, for a couple of sausage sandwiches. You drank all my liquor. You ever hear this? Ridiculous. Absolutely guy, a ridiculous. friend invites you over to the house and he charges me. I think I think wife. it's a, I think it's apropos. Yeah. That's the way I'm looking at it. Hey, listen, we have a really cool show today. Uh, uh, in about 30 seconds, we're going to bring in our dear friend, Al Crisofoli from Love of the Game Auctions. Al just concluded a great auction. We've got another great auction coming up. But we're real excited to be bringing in. And we tried about three or four months ago to bring these folks in. Yeah. Uh, there's a new company uh, that's owned by collectors. Uh, called Card Ladder, and we're bringing in the uh, owners, uh, Josh Johnson, Chris McGill, and Christina Thorson uh, from Card Ladder. This is a really cool concept. It really is. I looked at it. I didn't know, quite frankly, I didn't know a damn thing about it. After doing a little research, I said, I mean, this is a no-brainer. Uh, why hasn't this happened before? So uh, what else? I, I, and Oh, we have Scott, uh, Scott uh, Russell yeah. coming in a little later on Scott. from the Collector Connection. We'll talk to him for a couple minutes. Headlines. With that being said, there are no headlines. The headlines, no headlines. You know what the headline is? What? The Red Sox are making their move. Ah, That's the headline, baby. Yes. That's the headline. They're making they, their move. Yeah, well, they are making their move. They've, I don't know, six, seven in a row. Chris Sale is going to be there. He's going to be their closer. Yeah, well, as soon okay. as they make him the closer, he comes back. It's, it's, it's going to be his Well, they need pitching to go into ah, the They'll world. be fine. So. All right, let's bring in our good friend, Al Crisofoli from Love of the Game Auctions. Go ahead, Al. I Yankee see you fan. shaking He's your head. Yankee You're a Yankee fan. fan. I want to hear this. Can you preface any introduction of me with Red Sox talk? <laughs> Come on. <laughs> but listen, you know something? We were talking about this last week real quickly. Yeah. The Yankees are going to run away with it. There's no doubt. But the, you know what? They're, they'll figure out a way to blow it. Well, no, I'll tell you what we, Mallory and I were talking about it last week, and and Joe Tomasulo, the Yankees are not structured for a short series against really good pitching. I mean, what's his name? Uh, Judge is going to hit his fifty or sixty home runs, but how many of those fifty or sixty home runs are, 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 are you know off of crappy pitches? To be honest well, with you. Well, I mean, ju Judge is an elite player, but I agree with you that that uh, you know that they're not. An offense that scores 10 runs a game is not going to do anything against good pitching in the playoffs. What the Yankees have this year that they haven't had in the past is good pitching. And and true. so, true. you that know, it, true. it'll be interesting to see if their good pitching stacks up against somebody else's good pitching. Historically, it has not. Um, but, you, boy, their pitchers have been fun to watch. Why don't you, you know, just come over to the dark days. side and let's call it a day? That's what you I, should do. Come I over think. to the dark side. <laughs> yes. Right. Red Sox. Ever since Greg Nettle squeezed that pop up in his glove, that that was I was a Yankee. I don't fan. remember that. <laughs> what, what was that? Bad memories. Bad <laughs> memories. All right, listen, uh, Al, you 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 concluded. You had a great, very successful auction. Uh, very yeah. impressed. Why don't you tell us about that? Because I, I mean, there's some of the stuff that was amazing. And then you have an auction coming up. Talk about the yeah, uh, the old yeah. auction first. So the last auction was real strong. Uh, we we set our own records for most bidders, most bids, um, uh, most revenue. Uh, so that you know that's great, and it's it's great to see a lot of people participating. Uh, you know, we had I think the most winners, most different winners that we've ever had. Um, so that's really really cool. Uh, now we're gearing up for our summer auction, which will happen right after the national. At the national, we'll have a bunch of uh, material that we'll have uh, from the auction will be on display in our booth. Don't ask me the booth number, um, but uh, it it should be a, an excellent auction. We've got the uh, the number two uh, Roberto Clemente set on the uh, the PSA registry. Very cool. Uh, Got another T two hundred six set that we're going to sell all five twenty all in one shot, which is which is uh, pretty neat. Uh, and this time we've got 
you know, we've got a host of, of rare stuff, you know, cards you don't see every day, but we've, we've got a really nice 19th century section in this auction. So, uh, uh, if you're interested in that, this will be a good auction to pay attention to. You yeah. know, the, uh, the McGee Ericard, uh, you sold in, uh, in your past auction. That one got by me. You know, I don't own one of those. I, I do not. Really? What is it, McGee? Sherry McGee's Eric card. Oh, well, yeah. I, yeah. I never owned that card. That, that, uh, huh. It's a little frustrating that I missed that one. Yeah. yeah. To God. But anyway. I, you know, I like, the, um, I like the idea that the hobby is, is uh, the, the way it's crazy right now. It's, it's tough to, uh, uh, to build a T206 set. It's, I mean, it's always been tough to build a T206 set. I've tried it three or four different times, and I'll get up around 300 cards and and uh, and give up. Well, you, you run know, out of stuff. gas. I mean, if you, if you really do. I mean, you run out of you know, gas. Yeah, I'm not really a set builder, so it's, you know, I love those cards, and, and it's obviously it's the most important pre-war set probably, and, and uh, you know, it's a great it's a great challenge to build it once you get to that last 40 or 50 cards. But, uh, but I, I do like the idea of selling all 520 all at once. That's cool. Do you advertise uh, or how, how do you ask or do you ask for those cards? In the, well, I'll say advertising. I beg, you know I beg I mean? for them, Rico. Well, I mean, where? <laughs> where do you do it? On your website or? Everywhere, yeah. Everywhere. No, okay. <laughs> so, I mean, we, we do a lot of advertising to our, directly to our customer base, but yeah. we're, also, we're also out there in the hobby and we're outside the hobby and, okay. you know, online and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. yeah. Now, we got about a minute left. The auction that's coming up after the national, uh, how are consignments going? Are you still open for consignments? So we are open for showstopper type of material only at this point. Uh, we're, you know, we're fully loaded with, uh, with a great selection of stuff for this auction. So if you have material that's, that's uh, you know, high-end stuff and you're interested in having it be part of this auction and being on display in our booth, you can still get in touch. Uh, info at loveofthegameauctions.com is our email address, or you can just find us at, at loveofthegameauctions.com, and there's, a, there's an inbound form there. We look forward to seeing you yeah. at the auction. And, okay. well, I, well, I just was very curious watching you here because it looks like you got a haircut. But you ever think about growing a beard? Oh, there it is. Okay. Yeah, no, growing no a beard or a goatee? Goatee. I think he'd look great in a goatee. A goatee, I said goatee that. maybe? I said that. Get some I, I, anything to hide all these chins. I'm thinking about it. It's, <laughs> you know, I mean, you can do it in two ways. You could lose weight or you could grow yeah, a beard. No, nah, grow and, a beard because <laughs> oh, I don't want to die thin. That's right. Exactly. So listen, we'll see you. Uh, we're going to see what the national uh, we're going to be uh, jm is uh, hooked up with the camera crew they're going to be coming around taking some good vids and interviewing awesome. so we'll see you there yeah we'll see you it's look, to look see you forward guys. to it. all right i'll take, take care um al christopher love of the game auctions hey uh, just uh, quickly on yeah uh, we're talking about the red sox stuff yeah right? so do you disagree with me with sale honestly yeah why because they they don't want them to, to there's more stress on your arm as a, in a bullpen because you warm up you warm up you sometimes use two days in a row if you can do it. And with his windup, you know, he's a, uh, he slashes the ball, um, and he could get hurt again. So if you go, you let him throw five, six innings at the most if he starts. But what, what about your, but your old pal, My e old. Eckersley? What about him? He, he transitioned easily. But he he didn't have a sore arm. He didn't have a – I don't think he ever – yeah, he might have had a little bit, but – but no, no, the Red Sox, uh, you know, they got – their thing is hitting. Uh, they've got to hit. They've got to score runs. But uh, pitching will come. All right. Now let's bring in our guest uh, for the most of the rest of the show. And I'm, I'm really excited about this because this is a concept that is, uh, uh, I think, spectacular. Josh Johnson, Chris McGill, and Christina Thorson from the Card Ladder. Uh, Josh is in Arizona. Chris and Christina are in – Illinois. First of all, welcome, guys. How you doing? Yeah. Good Thanks to see you. Thanks for having us. Yeah, good, for good. Having us. All right, so let's yes. start with Josh. Josh, can you just give us a little background uh, on the company itself? How long you guys have been in existence and how you've, you're, you're now part of a huge conglomerate. Why don't you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, sure. So, uh, well, Chris and I have been friends and Christina, we've been friends in the hobby for a few years now. Uh, we collect similar things, you know, nineties basketball mostly. And in when the pandemic started in 2020, we, uh, had started talking about, you know, making a business around sports card analytics, Chris and Christina had already started up something similar 
uh, analyzing Michael Jordan cards uh, from the nineties and they had produced reports and data on that. And then, you know, Chris came to me with the idea, Hey, what if we just turn that into, you know, a, an online tool? What if we can actually automate this and, uh, you know, put it on the internet. And so then we just kind of started making it and we launched in June of 2020, June 23rd, 623, uh, which is important for our company because uh, LeBron's number six, which is my favorite player. And Michael Jordan's number 23. That's these guys' favorite player. So not a bad combo. That was the, that was the start. <laughs> Did you have a question? Uh, actually, I, well, I, I, well, I, I have a question. Learn more about the, uh, you know, the, the, the company and uh, what their goals are. I think that's a good, that's a very good question. What are the goals of the company? I mean, how big do you want to get? Um, talk about that for a sec. Who, who would you like to? Oh, reply? I'm sorry. You, I'm sorry. You, Chris. You. Let's go to Chris. Yeah. All right. Why? Because I'm the one who just jumped in right there. Absolutely. Yes, absolutely. absolutely. Right. right. Yeah. Thank I you. mean, uh, goals <laughs> of the company super long term is to have total comprehensive coverage of the all time price histories for most, if not all sports cards. Uh, but, you know, shorter term is just continuing to build out our library of our verified card database. And it, it takes time guys, you know, because prior to what we're doing here, there had been very little work to organize and document price histories for cards going backwards in time. It's one thing to start tracking prices from today forward, you know, like the guests previously, sure. Love of the game auctions. They're, they're creating comps. You know, you can track them starting today going forward, but we actually take it quite a bit further when we construct sales histories for cards, we do it not only going into the future, but we build the entire sales history of that card going back as far as we can, which in most cases is back to 2002, 2003 era. So, so basically then what you're doing is you're not only giving the collector the analytics on the card and the history of the card, but you're actually helping the collector to make a, an intelligent buying decision. Yeah, I hope so. I mean, it's ultimately up to the intelligence of the collector. Uh, the The data is only as powerful as the person wielding it. But we're trying to make sure that people have reliable price histories at their fingertips whenever they want them. And that also that people can look at aggregate trends. So we've got all different types of ways of, of uh, organizing the data into indexes, whether it's player indexes or you know, category indexes and stuff like that. Do you have any thought about uh, expanding the demographics? Uh, in other words, for for the the auction houses, really, the age, who's buying it, you know, men, women, all of that stuff combined. That's a good question. That's two good questions. You know, I'm row. not sure what you mean by expanding. Well, I mean, okay, you're, you're doing for the collectors. You're giving them an idea, right, of the costs and all that. And what about expanding to uh, even further to learn and to have for, as I say, for the um, for the collectors, not the collectors, but the, the auction, uh, for the industry. So you know? do, do auction houses go to you guys for advice? <laughs> uh we probably shouldn't publicly comment on that one way or the other, All right. but I can tell you this. We did a really interesting report. Josh ran it. Let, let me let Josh talk about it because starting in December of 2020, we started compiling the sales volume aggregates across pretty much every auction house and major marketplace from eBay to all the big name auction houses to even, you know, smaller, but up and coming marketplaces like my slabs and, yeah. you know, Josh produces a monthly report and we, we had a really actually interesting finding uh, in terms of the sales aggregate in May. So go ahead, Josh. Yeah. So we started tracking total sales volume of every marketplace that we track. And we noticed that in the month of May, the sales volume was the highest we've ever had since we started tracking in December, which we thought was interesting because you know, the narrative right now is that sports cards and collectibles markets are going down, stock markets are going down. You would think that the volume of sports cards transacted would be down, but May was actually the highest month. Uh, I believe it was like $23 million that we tracked in sales for just the month of May, and it was 21 in the previous month. 
So what do you attribute that to? That this space is different than a, an investable market space. This is a collectible space. And uh, the other thing I was thinking is that as card prices potentially go down per card, that means that more collectors have opportunities to acquire cards and purchase cards. Uh, so it's just, you know, more reason to buy stuff and increase the overall That's sales. Interesting. Yeah. So, do you think that non-mainstream uh, collectors uh, are kind of redirecting their money towards the, the card world because of what's happening uh, <clears throat> with the economy and investments? Good. Yeah, I have actually seen a lot of articles and reports and data around, you know, how during a recession, collectible spaces are where a lot of people choose to put their money, stash their money, because it's generally a little bit safer. The items are more rare. They're they're less liquid, which I know people love the term liquidity in the stock market. But in cards and collectible spaces, the liquidity is much lower. So the ability to hold something and maintain its value without seeing it sell over and over on different platforms is, is appealing to people that are in the stock market. Very cool. I want to ask Christina, uh, Christina, what safeguards uh, exist to ensure ethically responsible data reporting? That's because, a good I mean, question. it's really, you know, yeah. it's really uh, important. That's, that is a great question, Rico. So um, since the inception of card ladder, we've taken like the ethic, the business ethics of our company, like, very seriously. So um, every time we vet, uh, a, like we create a card profile for a, any card, a human is doing that and they're going through all of those sales. Um, we actually like go through and vet sales every night. Mm. So um, from 11 p.m. to about 3 a.m. Central time, Chris and I mm. are awake going through every single sale that happened that day, yeah. 365 days a year, wow. Wow. no days off. Wow. So um, we make sure that, you know, there's no nefarious actions happening via shill bidding or zero feedback bidders that are sellers that are selling to zero feedback buyers um, and pumping up a market. Hmm. Um, and then we actually have a folder called purgatory that if there's something a little suspicious happening we put the sale in a purgatory folder and our members and our users can see that sale but it doesn't show up on their graphs and then we wait for um secondary confirmation either from the buyer or seller that this is an authentic sale that was consummated Mm. and that way we then move it out of purgatory and into the sales history for that oh. card. Hey, you're going to purgatory. I know. Christina, what is your role? What is your role with the company? Which one? Christina. Okay. Oh, me? Um, I am the COO um, janitor, as I like to say, of Card Ladder. <laughs> Anything that needs to be done that the boys don't want to do uh, usually falls on my desk. See, in, in the not then the boss, in the not then the boss, we call that the fixer. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. Okay, yeah. <laughs> That's what we call it. Uh, That's a good name. <laughs> How do I search She's for the boss a... too, though? By the way, she is the boss. She tells us what to do all the I'm time. I'm sure. I'm yeah. sure. Behind every successful man, yep, there right. is a, su- a way more successful woman. Uh, how do I search for a card? Well, there's a couple of ways. So ideally, if the card you're looking for, like a 48 leaf Jackie, you know, we have that in our verified uh, sales database. So you know, you can get the full price history in a quick, organized fashion links to reference materials about the checklist for the set and stuff like that take you to the psa population report you can get all that stuff just just punch in a couple of keywords uh but if if the card you're looking for might not be in our database yet it still is going to be coming you'll you'll still be able to do research it's just it's it's more on you but you can go to our sales history tab where we have over 40 million historical sales documented and even the most obscure card if it's sold on the internet in the last 20 years, it's going to be in the sales history tab. So cool. hopefully the card That's you're great. looking for, we've already built a profile for it. But even if even if we haven't, uh, you still can find the sales history, pull up old pictures of old auctions and stuff like That's that. Great. It's just That's called very sales cool. history. It's probably our best feature. Yeah. We are chatting with Josh Johnson, Chris McGill, and Christina Thorson. We're going to take a quick break. When we come back, guys, he's 112 years old. 
I'm 110 years old. We want to talk about the vintage market and your thoughts on that. Hang in there. We'll be right back. Since 1996, Brian Drent and the staff at Denver's Mile High Card Company have led the charge in the collectibles hobby. Mile High is a full-service dealer specializing in buying and selling cards and offers a competitive consignment program for all collectors. Whether it be their computerized want list service, appraisals, or auction services, Mile High has it all. If you've been searching for a company with a selection of high-grade vintage 1888 to 1970 baseball cards and memorabilia that shares your passion, aim high, Mile High. Go to milehighcardco.com or call 303-840-2784 for more information. This is Brian Drent, president of Mile High Card Company. Is your sports card and memorabilia collection properly insured? For easily replaced personal property, homeowner's insurance is all most people need. But for prized possessions that you may have spent a lifetime collecting, it doesn't go nearly far enough. Collectibles Insurance Services has been insuring for over 50 years. They offer a full range of protection and a $0 deductible at an affordable rate with no appraisals required. I know because they insure my collection. If you have a minute, go to collectinsure.com and learn more about insuring your personal card or memorabilia collection. Hi, this is Dan from Memory Lane Auctions here to remind you that the renowned Memory Lane Collectibles Company has served as a beacon of light to the collecting community for the past several decades. Indeed, folks, it has been our utmost privilege and pleasure to provide the most enthusiastic collectors with an abundance of the finest sports cards and memorabilia for America's most coveted sports personalities via our world-class auctions. Whether you choose either a private sale transaction or the auction route, Memory Lane cordially invites you to reach out to us to maximize the value of your prized possessions. Also, it is not just sales that we pride ourselves on being the best of the rest, because if you are seeking a particular keepsake for your esteemed gathering, we will be relentless in our quest to find that special piece to fulfill your collecting dreams. So no time to wait. Reach out to us today for the purposes of capitalizing on our unparalleled marketing capabilities. Simply pick up the phone and dial 877-606-5263. That's 877-606-LANE or find us on the World Wide Web at www.memorylaneinc.com. Now is the time for your valued consignment to ultimately become another one of Memory Lane's record-setting prices. How would you like to own the bat that was used by your favorite player when he hit that towering home run or game-winning base hit? Now look no further than JT Sports, specializing in the sale and authentication of professional game-used bats. As the official authenticators of professional model game used bats for PSA DNA, JT Sports will guarantee the authenticity of any bat purchased from them. JT Sports also buys and sells game-worn uniforms, gloves, and baseball equipment. The unique quality of the collectible is what JT Sports is all about. Give them a call at 609-487-8003 or check them out at GameUseBats.com. Number six on the roster, but number six in our hearts. Number one in our hearts. <laughs> on deck Great. with Rico Patricelli. Okay, it is time for our segment called On Deck with Rico, brought to us each week by a good friend, Brian Dwyer, and the great staff. Don't at these kids go to school? And they're yeah. to no, they're all delinquents. They're all oh. delinquents. <laughs> don't, forget to your bid, don't forget to get your bid in by going to robertedwardauctions.com. That's Robert Edward Auctions for extraordinary results and extraordinary service. Hey, this is a kind of a two-part question, and I've always oh, wondered geez. this. This was submitted by John McCarthy. <laughs> Komsky. Komsky yeah. You ready? Yep. Did you guys ever exchange autographs at the All-Star game? When you were in the All-Star, you were five times? How, how many times? Well, I was... Chosen I, five, but you played in two played All-Star two. Did you guys exchange autographs? Uh, yeah. Yeah, somewhat. Not, you know, not extensively, and like every guy, because the real big name guys, they, uh, they, you know, they didn't, they didn't ask for autographs to... At least the times that I was there. So Mantle wouldn't ask for yours. But no, you... but I would ask for Mantle's, of right. course. That makes know. sense. All right. The other second part to this question is, as a sign, and we've talked about Root, we've talked about Mantle, we've talked about a lot of players. 
Did you ever have a clubhouse guy or anyone else sign for you? Never. Look me in the eye. Never. Are you kidding me? (laughs) Never did? No, never. You kidding me? Uh, There had been rumors that there were other guys who did that, uh, but... I mean, Ted did that. Well, for a little while, but... uh, Vinny Orlando, didn't he sign for him? No, Johnny Orlando. Johnny Orlando? That's the rumor, but I'm not so sure that's true. Really? Yeah, because we'd have... Every day coming in, there'd be a basket there with maybe a dozen to two dozen balls for the organization. What they did with them, you know, who knows. But, um, yeah, I I mean, it wasn't that big, you know, not that many balls. So most guys signed them. Signed their own. Kari Stremski signed every one because I saw him every day do it. Interesting. All right, let's come back to Oh, by the way, our guest, Mr. McCormsky, he gets a two-win a Great American Collectibles T-shirt. So nice. we will get that in the mail to you. Thank you uh, for submitting the question. That's self... Uh, 100% cotton. Yeah, but it's self... Uh, what do you call that? Yeah, I don't know. Self-drying? No. No. It's not, we're, not, <clears throat> we're a little cheap. Okay. Right, I have a question. Back. I'm going to direct this question to Josh. Josh, we're vintage guys. Um, and He's how are you guys handling vintage cards right now? Uh, as far as the analytics, the far as the, I mean, there's a zillion cards out there. How are you handling vintage cards right now? Uh, well, we specialize in basketball, and that's where we kind of got started. But we have definitely expanded the vintage baseball uh, market recently, and we've added a, a few employees to help build out the the vintage baseball library. Uh, we'd have to ask these guys more specifically about how they handle those types of cards when betting sales. All right, so I'll, I'll read. I'll read the uh, sorry. Redirect the question to Chris. Um, Chris, I have a uh, I, I have a T two hundred six Ty Cobb with a green back background. Nice I w- card. Thank you. I want to know uh, PSA six, by the way. I want to know how many exist. Um, can you can you give us that information if I'm asking for it? Yeah, so the way that would work is you would look up that card in our verified sales library. And once you land it on the page, here's what you're going to see. You're going to see a nice, big, crisp scan of the card, which I think is important when somebody's browsing, looking for a card they might want to add to their collection. You're going to see a nice, beautiful scan of the card. You're going to see the PSA population report on that card you're going to see the price history for the card and then if you really want to dive in we provide reference links you know we'll send you to maybe the trading card database checklist for the card we'll send you to the psa card fact for the card and uh you know and we also provide links to discover that card if it's for sale on marketplaces so if it's for sale on one of the great auction houses that sponsors this show for example you know you, you we have ways through our we have a feature called shop where you can actually search out that card and see what marketplaces it's available. Really? On that's, see, that's cool. That's yeah. very cool. Yeah. That is <laughs> very cool. Do, do you guys, I, again, I, I'm going to use, I'm going to mention eBay. eBay is a big sponsor of the show. Uh, one of those links, do, do, do you connect to, to the eBay site? Yeah, we sure do. And uh, we, we drive a ton mm-hmm. of traffic through those links because most of the time, if somebody's browsing card ladder, you know, they're, they're looking for a card. Sure. Ladder. Sure. So every card, you know, eBay might not have every card for sale at any in any given moment, but if they do, you know, we supply a button that users can click and it takes them straight to eBay to a curated search that'll help them quickly find out if that card's available. I know I'm shocked that this concept. I mean, I know there there are other (laughs) peripheral companies that kind of have their toe in the water. But I mean it's well these are bright people it's surprising that this hasn't happened. A lot earlier, you I'm know, not. because basically what you guys are, uh, you're a stock market, f- and I'm looking at it, you're a stock market for the collectibles card world, and we've been, you've been bitching about it for years, why don't we have this? And you really yeah. have. No, yeah. I mean, he has, and it's, it's, a, it's a stock market for, it, we had made the suggestion that maybe, you know, you know uh, and I'm going to give you a prime example. <clears throat> My financial advisor is a collector, happens to be a collector. Vito he, Genovese. <laughs> he's actually, he was actually looking to, to get licensed to advise 
on buying and selling. Collect this, you know, cards. Don't need them anymore. Look at you guys. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we're half the equation, right? So we we're, we we organize and provide what hopefully is credible data. That's but that's cool. In terms of advice and decision making, you know, that that's that's a whole different ball game. Yeah, I'm, I'm not. I'm sure I'm preaching to the choir here. No, no, cool. it's you know, a, a Rico Petroselli rookie card. I've been I've been <laughs> searching. For a PSA 10 Rico Petroselli rookie card, they just don't exist. <laughs> That's right. I bought them all. <laughs> no. Uh, I got a question. Z, z, plural. For who? Uh, for Christina. Huh? Yeah. See, notice he always kind of gravitates yeah. to, the, to, to the young ladies. That's right. That's right. She's smart. They're both three of them are bright. What is shop? I'm going to give you ladder and feed. That's good. Shop or... Okay, so shop is what Chris was talking about, where it's a feature that um, is active auctions or say uh, sales listings uh, that are across uh, multiple platforms that we track, that we have data partnerships with, um, and we get their live auctions and live sales uh, that are directly imposed uh, in card letter on the shop feature, but also on the card profile, if you scroll down, uh, there's a section for shop. So if you're actually on the Rico uh, PSA 10 card profile, then you can scroll down and you can see uh, on the shop uh, section on the card profile we can find where that. he might have his cards listed um, mm. if he ever decides to sell one. <laughs> um, <laughs> and then ladder is, um, ladder is kind of what started card ladder so that is the um uh, an organization and listing uh and you could filter it through many different ways and sort it different ways um of card ladder verified card profiles so those are the verified card profiles there's about thirty thousand uh currently that chris and i uh and a few researchers that we've brought on uh since being acquired by collectors um are our parent company uh, and sister company, uh, we are sister company to PSA. Yep. Um, that's where we have all of the verified cards where you have the card profile and the, um, like all of the verified, like al like uh, data mm -hmm. of a card. And then the last one was, I'm sorry, which was- the Oh, last uh, feed. 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 <clears throat> Feed is a great feature. Um, this actually started because we ourselves are collectors and we oh. really enjoy content um, about cards. Yeah. And feed is a um, kind of like a news feed. It's our. It's where we have updates for the app and the website. It's where we post our ladder headlines every morning. Um, and it's where we have a curated selection of content creators who have new videos or new podcasts that have come out about sports cards. Um, and that updates every time one of our content creators um, that we're partnered with releases one of their videos or podcasts, it shows up in Card Ladders. Oh, nice. Uh, I just want to ask, is that the buttons on the website, links? On your website, you can get to all yeah. of these. Yeah. I want to direct a question to each one of you, the three of you, uh, regarding the modern and ultra-modern market. Um, over the last two years, I'm going to say since the pandemic or just pre-pandemic, a lot, the, the entire hobby slash industry has changed. There has been an entirely new wave of uh, hobbyists slash investors. My question to you guys is, is the modern market, I mean, is that where it's at or is it softening a little bit so that now these modern investors are kind of seeing the whole picture and rather than specula uh, speculating on a Zion Williamson PSA 10 that is w worth nowhere near what that it was worth a year and a half ago, uh, you know, prior to him getting hurt, are they kind of seeing the whole picture now rather than, you know, trying to hit, make that home run with that one card? Mm -hmm. I'm going to ask you, uh, Josh, uh, your opinion first. 
Yeah, it's a really great question and a great observation. Uh, we've definitely noticed that over the last couple of months, specifically, that the vintage market has has gone up, you know, and, and a lot of the the modern stuff has gone down in value. And I think, to your point, people that have been in the hobby, what, like a year and a half now, right, um, are starting to become more educated over time, realize this, you know, that stuff, the vintage cards are a lot safer. But I will add, we still see staggering all-time highs on modern uh, Anthony sure. Edwards cards sell for 200000 You know, Zion's cards still sell for a lot. So uh, I... there's still a good deal of prospecting going on. Uh, but we are seeing a shift into vintage right now, especially like the, you know, the low pop high grade. I wanted to add, I, I found a, I searched Rico Petroselli in, in our sales history. And the highest sale of all time is $10,200. It was a golden auction. February 1st, it's the 1967 Tops PSA 10. That's a Pop 1 card. See, now, so, wait a second. That's, a, that's not even your rookie card. The no, it's not. No, that's not your rookie card. That was, a, that was the year, the impossible dream year. 67. 67. Right. Oh, okay, yeah. Um, 10 grand? Are you kidding 10, me? 10,000? Uh, where's my... Uh... <laughs> Forget it. You get nothing. <laughs> you get nothing? I, I'll tell you what. This is a very funny... <clears throat> if you really want to see a very interesting autograph that is out there in the collectibles world, and this is the truth, there is an index card signed by Rico Petroselli and... Babe Ruth. No, that was a ball. That was a ball. Uh, Rico Petroselli and Babe Ruth. Can you imagine? With all due respect, I hit behind them. With all, I, with all due respect, he hit third. I hit somebody fourth. had a Babe Ruth <laughs> guy sick autograph on his ball, and years later, approached this gentleman to sign. Also, I, I said, "What are you? This Babe Ruth on here?" He says, "I, I don't care." I want you to sign. I said, "No, I'm not going to sign. Please, please, please." All right, I'll sign it. Oh. I really, mean, I felt bad. Chris, what is your opinion of the uh, what we just talked about re- regarding the modern and ultra modern? I'm with you. And here, let me give you three data points uh, using Card Ladder to to help back it up. So we have indexes, total market indexes for every player. So just like you know, in the stock market, there's you you have uh, you know representative indexes that capture a, a yeah. sliver of the market, but you also have total market indexes to look at every stock. These are total market indexes. Look at it. every card of a specific player that we have in our database. So for Jackie Robinson, this is the first of three examples I'll give you. Over the last two years, his market, his total market index is up 397%. Wow. Over the last two years. That was Mickey a hell of an investment. investment. Wow. His total market index is up 195% over the last two years. And Babe Ruth's total market index is up 316%. So, that, see, you know, and that's encouraging. Again, as being a vintage guy, that's encouraging to a guy like myself. And not only that, quite frankly, over the years, I mean, we, the major auction houses are all big sponsors of this show. And talking to the Heritages and the REAs and the Mile High and the Memory Lane, Those guys were basically brought up in the vintage world. And the big concern when all of this started was, is the vintage market going to collapse? Is it going to, is it going to go down the chute? And we were, everybody was kind of hoping that, you know, something, as soon as the dust clears and these, these young investors see the clear picture, they're going to start gravitating, just expanding their, their investments and horizon. And that's happening. Christina, what do you say? I say that um, it's an interesting it's an interesting time to be in cards. Uh, we had this boom in 2020 when everyone was home, and um, and we're seeing that people who came in because of nostalgia or because it was a way to flip and make a fast buck when everyone wasn't allowed to go to work, um, they're sticking around for the most part. It seems and. I think that with the time that has has surpassed over the last two years, people are starting to get smarter because they see the cycles of the market and they see the cycles of cards and they realize that, you know, um, perhaps that prospect who didn't play very many games his rookie year wasn't a great choice to put a lot of money behind, but there are Hall of Famers and GOATs that you can really get behind whose markets, like the three Chris just uh, labeled, uh, go continue to go up 
but then there are also like slow and steady uh players yeah. that you can really like get a good return on if you are patient and um i think that i think it's an interesting time because we're seeing that education like and those lights go off in people's eyes what, but, as they stick around longer in cars. We have about a minute and a half, but I got to tell you guys something. You guys are contributing to to opening people's eyes here. So, I mean, I, I don't even know if you guys realize that, but it's really important that you understand that because you're you're taking you're taking a market and you're 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 showing the data to everyone, and that's a that's a good thing, man. That's a good thing. We got about a minute. Rick. Well, no, I was just going to say he's a vintage guy. I'm more of a modern guy. Uh, I think for for the growth of the industry, I still say that you got to have these younger people, you know, buying the, absolutely the present day players. Absolutely. You know, I mean. Whether it's, you know, a oh, judge or, or whomever, you, you know, you so him. it keeps it going. He, he said the modern market is still right now no, I'm outpacing saying. the vintage market, which, I, you know, that's a no. good thing. But it's so really, both I, think, of the moves. I think it's good to see. Your website, guys, uh, so that if people, uh, listen, yeah. to our viewers and listeners, I want to know. Uh, it's important, go on to this site. This is the stock market. This is the NASDAQ. This is the stock exchange that everybody's been waiting for. What's your uh, website address, guys? Anybody? Cardladder, cardladder.com. Very difficult. Uh, we have a free site, and then you can upgrade to a premium pro version as well for $15 a month. Oh, oh that's fantastic. great. Good. Listen, I can't Give thank you money. guys enough. we got to get you guys back great. on the show because we have a lot to pick so your brains much. about as, as time goes on. Are you guys going to be at the National? Yes, sir. Hey, Good. all right. Make sure you stop by. Maybe we can get him on stage. We're going to be doing a two-hour special show on the Burka stage on Friday from 1 to 3. Maybe we can get one of you. With all due respect, guys, Christina, maybe we can get you up on the stage <laughs> with us. No, that'd be great. All right, we wish you guys the best, and we'll Thanks. see you at the National. Thanks. Thank great. you so much Terrific. for having us. Take care. Awesome. Good bunch well, of people. Thank you. Uh, Christina, great. Josh, and Chris. Chris. Yeah. Wow. Great. That's, what a great. All right, listen, experience. we're going to take a quick break. We come back. we got some business to attend to. We do? Yeah, and uh, Scott <clears throat> Russell is going to be joining us briefly. Okay. Hang in there. We'll be right back. Pristine Auction is a family-owned and operated online auction specializing in autographed memorabilia, sports cards, coins, art, and collectibles. Since their founding in 2010, they've grown to two facilities in Phoenix, Arizona, totaling over 60,000 square feet. Jared Cavalli and an incredible staff of over 150 team members serve a very large customer base and enjoy every minute of it. By working with leading authentication companies, Pristine ensures all items are 100% authentic. In addition, third-party authenticators regularly travel to Pristine Auction to provide authentication services on-site. Pristine Auction strives to operate its business in a way that's honoring to God, their families, and their customers. With a strong focus on speed, quality, and premier customer service, their mission is to be the leading online auction for every level of collector and fan. Pristine also works for Hope Sports and Identity Hoops International, traveling to Mexico to build houses for the less fortunate. Pristine Auction offers several online auction formats with thousands of auctions ending each day. For more information, go to pristineauction.com. That's Pristine Auction, the best in the business. If you are a discerning collector interested in owning the most important pieces in the hobby, look no further than Leland's Auctions. The original sports auction and appraisal house, Leland's was established in 1985 by legendary pioneer founder Joshua Leland Evans. And today, President Mike Hefner carries on the tradition. From the Tom Brady card and memorabilia collection to the famed Boston Garden Auction to high-end card auctions from every major sport, Leland's has always maintained the highest standards. Go to Leland's.com and get your bid in. That's Leland's, the hobby's leading sports auction house for four decades. It's often been said that championships are won on the practice field and world records come only to those willing to work harder than everybody else. Heritage Auctions is the world's largest collectibles auctioneer because we believe that becoming the best is only an invitation to the challenge of remaining the best. This requires the skills of the hobby's top experts, capable of identifying and maximizing value for our consigners. It requires the most visited website in the industry, 
supporting a global audience of collectors over a million and a half strong. It requires a dedicated press department that expands our global reach far beyond the entrenched hobby marketplace. It's hard work, but a simple premise. Present the finest collectibles to the largest population of potential buyers, and world records will come. We invite all listeners to put the unmatched power of Heritage Auctions to work for you. Auction evaluations are always free, and our commission-based fee structure ensures that our interests are always aligned. The highest possible price for your collectibles. There will always be new world records to chase, so let's chase them together. Visit our website at ha.com and request your no-obligation review today. Hi, this is Dan from Memory Lane Auctions here to remind you that the renowned Memory Lane Collectibles Company has served as a beacon of light to the collecting community for the past several decades. Indeed, folks, it has been our utmost privilege and pleasure to provide the most enthusiastic collectors with an abundance of the finest sports cards and memorabilia for America's most coveted sports personalities via our world-class auctions. Whether you choose either a private sale transaction or the auction route, Memory Lane cordially invites you to reach out to us to maximize the value of your prized possessions. Also, it is not just sales that we pride ourselves on being the best of the rest, because if you are seeking a particular keepsake for your esteemed gathering, we will be relentless in our quest to find that special piece to fulfill your collecting dreams. So no time to wait. Reach out to us today for the purposes of capitalizing on our unparalleled marketing capabilities. Simply pick up the phone and dial 877-606-5263. That's 877-606-LANE or find us on the World Wide Web at www.memorylaneinc.com. Now is the time for your valued consignment to ultimately become Another one of Memory Lane's record-setting prices. With so many fakes out there, it's hard to figure out if the sneakers you want are real. But when you buy eligible sneakers on eBay, you can be confident they're genuine because every pair goes through a meticulous authentication process. Introducing eBay Authenticity Guarantee. First, the sneakers you've purchased are inspected by a team of professional authenticators who carefully examine the shoes, including color, pattern, logos, and materials. Then they're measured and compared to the eBay listing to make sure they match. Even the laces, accessories, and box are checked. Once your sneakers are verified, they receive an authenticity tag, and every tag is NFC enabled so you can see the detailed specs. eBay authenticity guarantee. No fakes, no fraud, no doubt. Folks, Listen to me. Oh, God. eBay is the place to go for all of your memorabilia, sports or non-sports cards, autographs, and much more. Whether it's a gift for that special someone like Tom, <laughs> or you want to just to add to your collection, eBay's huge marketplace should be your first stop. And if you sell, now's the time to flip your cards and get some extra cash. <laughs> um, I shop on eBay all of the time. I get everything on eBay. That's, uh, that's true. That's eBay. Connecting buyers and sellers globally. You know, by the way, uh, want- a, a new book, uh, uh, The Diamondback Collection, 50 of the Greatest Cards in Sports Collecting History, is being released uh, at the uh, National. It's really not a book launch. It's just going to be there. Uh, there will, we are going to be... Uh, uh, we're going to have a meet and greet at the at Joe Drellick's uh, uh, exhibit, uh, East Coast Sports Marketing Booth. Uh, myself, along with Ellen, JM, sure. Joe Orlando, who co-wrote the book with us, and James Fiorentino will be there because James, there's some beautiful artwork of James yeah. in the book. Oh, he's great. That's the only time we're all going to be there signing. So. Listen, if you no, don't want to buy a book, you don't I'm, have to I'm buy a book. Just come there. by and say hi. You're going to be there. I am? I you bet your ass. Oh, I have not heard that. Well, you're not getting hey, let's paid for that. Let's negotiate it. Listen to me. See what I mean? He, Rico is, Rico is going to be there just to kind of schmooze, and you can say hi to Rico. But this is important that you understand this. Rico, you cannot sign autographs there. Did you realize that? Yeah, right. Uh, 
Okay, somebody you, will come across. You can, a little kid comes there and says, Rika, can you sign? No, nah, get out of here, under kid. The, under the table. Yeah, right. under Five the table. bucks That's at how least. You're doing. All right, listen. So we're going to be there uh, on uh, Saturday, July 30th from 10 to 12 at the East Coast Sports Marketing booth. And then we're going to be doing the show on the Berker stage from, on Friday from 1 to 3. With that being said, let's bring in the our pal, Scotty Russell from the Collecta Connection. Hey, Scott. Hi, Scotty. Hey, guys. How are you? Good. What's going on? You got some oh, good stuff. Much. You got some good, good stuff cooking. You have had one hell of a year, by the way, sir. One hell and of a year. Thank you. And, and, and it's just going to, it's doing nothing but getting better. So, uh, good. Wait, wait till you see the stuff we have at the National this year. Well, you, first of all, it's time for you to order. You know, you need to hire a staff, number one. I, well, I, I do have. I joke. I do have a staff. It's just not big enough. <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> so tell us about the uh, – you've got some Star Wars items on this coming auction, and this, this is kind of huge. Tell us yeah. about this. Well, there's, there's the biggie. That's the Star Wars Series 1 box sealed by BBCE. And I don't know how well you can see it, but that is about as clean a box as you will ever see. Very cool. I mean, there's no split corners. There's no shelfware. Um, you know, and the Luke Skywalker card, which is going for thousands, you pull between three and five out of a box because it's a small set, but it's a full-size wax box. So that's one of the few wax boxes where it might actually be worth it to crack it nowadays. Really? Interesting. Yeah. Now, is, what, what will the starting bid on something like? I, I mean, that you can't start your bidding at five bucks on something like that, can you? Uh, Twenty-five. Unbelievable. Just five bucks. And, yeah. no, and, no, and no reserve. And no reserve. That is amazing. So we always we always joke we're snobs. It's a real option. I tell you what, though, it's the right way to do it. Uh, did you have a question? No. Comic books. I want to talk about comic books. Okay. Well, actually, I can kind of hit both marks there. Yeah. <laughs> Star Wars. <laughs> you read this is books? Clone Wars number one Ooh. in 9.8. Wow. Uh, Clone Wars is the first appearance, if you were into any of the Disney TV shows, the Star Wars TV shows. One of the major characters played by Rosario Dawson, their first appearance is in that book. Mm. On top of it all, it's, if you see the UPC, a little lower. Yeah. That's, a, that's a newsstand copy, not a subscription copy. But this came out. Uh, was it 2008? So there were very few newsstand copies being sold anymore. Wow. So that's a particular rarity on top of being a popular book. Scott, did you get all of this Star Wars uh, memorabilia from one consigner? No, we, we, uh, that almost never happens, but we always seem to manage to, when the good stuff starts coming in, we put the word out, hey guys, we've got this coming. If you want to be part of it, you might want to get your consignments in and that kind of attracts more. So there was one really cool Star Wars collection, a lot of the oddball stuff, the sheets, yeah, uh, some of the toys. Mm. Um, but then we put the word out, and that, then the comic book came in, and the wax box came in. and You know, we were talking last week, we were talking to Mike Provenzal from Heritage Auctions, and he was telling us how the VCR market has exploded with... Stuff like Star Wars still in the packages and stuff. That well, stuff especially is, first cut on Star yeah, Wars. That's, that's a big, big deal because Lucas kept meddling with it. Unbelievable. That's the, I can't believe the money that stuff is going for these days. Now, you've had, you're one of the few, quite honestly, that have had very, very good success in non-sports auctions. You've done yeah. that. You've been very, very. We do it as a dedicated. It's its own thing, right? And and uh, tell us about that. What, what, how did you get into it? And it's been very successful for you. It actually, just like the the company in general, it started live. Um, the the Philly non sports show, which has been around forever. Yeah. Um, I knew some people involved with that, and I approached the promoter and said, "Hey, would you like to do a live non sport auction at the show?" And she thought that sounded like a great idea. So, you know, we, we started there and just like the rest of the business expanded it from there. But it was a dedicated non-sport auction at the Philly non-sport show. Really? Hmm. Unbelievable. Yeah. And just, that was, I guess, about five years ago now. Now, you're going to be at the National. Tell us about it. Of course. Are, are, you, are you sharing with anybody? Or are you going to be in your own? No, no. We're, we're on our own this time. Um, I got lucky in the lottery. I got the third to last spot last year. Wow. <laughs> wow. Very oh, yeah. cool. I, I mean, there are three left. I was like, there's no way I'm getting in. And then I like, Scott Russell. I'm like, holy. Well, we're going to be uh, exciting. We have our own booth for the first time. Yeah, we're going to be sending a, a little crew around. Uh, JM is going to be coming around with uh, uh, a little 
guy, guy that does some camera work. We're going to be. Uh, yeah, is JM allowed to sign autographs? Uh, no, JM can't. <laughs> yeah, he should. Yeah, actually, JM. You can. should too. No, I'm, well, I'm signing books. Hopefully, why don't you buy it? What I mean. <laughs> Buy them. Yeah, you got to buy them. that tune. Boy, oh, boy. All right, I'll give you one. I'll give you one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. Our, bi our big items at the show this year, we have two set breaks in an auction that will actually be running during the national. A 49 Bowman and a 52 Tops. Wow. Mm. Wow. Very uh, cool. So you'll be able to literally come in, look at the cards, and bid, sit down, register, and bid right at our booth. That's right a there. very, very small. Now, what are the what, uh, you said a 52 Tops. Set, complete set break. Wow. Ooh, very cool. Yep, every high number, nice. mantle, maze, everybody. Wow. Terrific. Uh, if people want to sign up, register now, can they? Or is it too early to register? Oh, you can always register because once you're registered, you're registered for good. May ask you to update your password every now and then. But and you're yeah, uh, so you can register at www.thecollectorconnection.com. All right, pal. Listen, Collector we look connection. forward to seeing you. We yeah. always have fun with you. It'll be good to see you again. See you. All right, take care. Hey, take care. Yes. Scott Russell from the Collector wow, Connection. That's nice. Rico, why don't you well, tell us about you... our guy, Mr. Charlie Perino at JRI Cards? Yeah, how phony that sounds. You know, it really does. Charlie Perino. No, you do doing that. You know I'm going to do this, right? Oh, that's a good point. All right. That's a good point. Hey, folks, listen, uh, if, if you want to have an absolute blast at obtaining some great modern or vintage cards, you got to check out JRI Cards. Our paisan, Charlie the Ripper Perino, along with Money Marco in the G... Yeah? yeah? JRI gang, give you the chance to participate in an opening and unopened seal fresh wax or cello. Cello. Cello, cello pack of your favorite sport. Who knows? You may wind up with a Mantle, Williams, Trout, Brady, or even Zappola. A Petroselli. It's easy. You buy in. Charlie opens the pack, and you win. That's right. It's that simple. I'll tell you. As a matter of fact, if you pull that special jewel, the guys at JR Cards will even have it graded for you. Featured in the LA Times, ESPN, and USA Radio, JRI is the hottest card pulling show on the internet. Charlie and his staff. I love Charlie. Make it fun. They, they really do. do. They do. They do. Entertaining and enjoyable with his collection of hats, sound effects, and yes, you may even see him wearing a leather helmet from Rico's days playing for Newt Rockney. What a wise guy you are. You will love it. And let's not forget that JRI donates a part of their proceeds to various charities. That's JRI cards. The breaks show that everyone is talking about. They're always digging up cardboard treasuries. For a great hobby experience, go to jricards.com. And one more, we've got our good friend Joe Drellick and the CSA Show. CSA Shows is proud to present the Chantilly Show being held on June 24th to June 26th. Somebody's birthday is uh, right around shh, right after that. Shh, shh. Held no at the talk. Dulles International uh, uh, Dulles Expo Center in Chantilly, Virginia, just minutes from the Dulles International Airport. <clears throat> Celebrating over 25 years at the same location, there's going to be over 300 dealer tables exhibiting on over 100,000 square feet of space. Both modern and vintage cars and memorabilia, as well as modern-day sports treasures, you won't have to look very far for that special card, bat, ball, or autograph. Major auction houses and third-party grading companies are also going to be on site. Some of the greatest players to ever grace the gridiron will be on hand. Mel Blount, mm. Chris Carter, Marshall Falk, Doug Flutie, our man oh, Doug. Doug. Mean Joe Green, Richard Seymour, and many, many more. So For more information, go to the CSAshows.com. The Chantilly Show, where you can find all of your sports collectibles treasures. And last but not least, yeah. we have been picking our own giveaway based on the oh, yes. the loyalty, loyalty and popularity right. and the longevity. And by the way, we have a ton of ton of uh, followers and listeners. This week's goes to our good friend from West Palm Beach, West Palm Beach, John Shadell, who, by the way, runs the West Palm Beach card uh, show. John's a great, great guy, been great. a great supporter. John, you know, the, uh, you know the rules. Email me your address, and we'll get one in the mail, and you better wear it at the show. <laughs> With that being said, I think we're done. Yeah, it's a fun show. Really enjoyed it. I'll tell you, those guys from Cod Ladder. Excellent. No, they're Excellent. Stuff. With that being said, we love you guys. Thanks for your support. Next week, I don't even know who the hell we have in next week. I can't remember. Uh, but with that being said, happy collecting.
The views and opinions expressed by the hosts, guests, or callers of this program do not necessarily reflect the opinions of the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe, the United Podcast Network, its partners or affiliates.